Hi, this is Jerry3904 on the MX Linux Forum. I'm here to present today the final version of the MX Linux and Raspberry Pi hybrid that we call Ragu 2. As of today, it is in the wild. There, I'm just going to look at big changes in three sections, about three minutes apiece, the changes in Fluxbox, the plain changes in Openbox, and then show you how the official display is looking. We spent a lot of time on that. Once again, if you want to get this, there's a couple of ways. Indirectly, on the left is a picture of the uh, MX Linux homepage, mxlinux.org. And again, down in the news section, by the time you see this video, you will see the article for this live release, and that will have the link. On the right is what, if you know your way around SourceForge and the mx-linux files, you can click at the bottom of that screen, the community respins, and then Raspberry Pi, and get it that way. So here we are. This is the default desktop for um, MX for for the Raspberry Pi respin. Uh, this is Fluxbox, and it will take you directly to this. We won't have to log in until you uh, you just go directly to it. The, um, some quick changes, uh, you'll notice in the left-hand corner, we've reduced those desktop icons just to the link for the video channel on MX Fluxbox. There was a setup link here, but now the uh, user will see, first-time user will see the same pop-up that they show, the Raspberry Pi configuration, which is also this icon. And so we didn't need the link there. Um, on the right, uh, on the, on the right, the conkeys are pretty much the same. Um, the panel at the bottom has been changed. Uh, for instance, it has a, a new, this is just this is just Xterm, a simple uh, terminal emulator. The fancy one is XFCE's terminal emulator that is also here. Uh, the localization has been more or less completed. We have all the documentation and the menus and uh, I can't even think what else that should come up and then Raspberry Pi does its uh, its uh, localization and we now on this question mark that brings up the documentation it will match the environment value for language if possible uh, I, and so you don't have to go looking for it I'll click it here and it'll show me the final uh, documentation for uh, for uh, this in uh, in English of course which is the default so uh, we have a new dark theme I like dark themes and this is the MX Linux MX comfort uh, dark it's called it's a very pretty very handsome dark dark theme we're going to use that for all of our all of our screens it's great uh, we really like it down in the uh, down below here, you'll see that we've replaced um, we've replaced uh, DHCPD CD with with Network Manager. We were having uh, problems with that, and so we went back to this, which is what we use on the on the Linux item in itself. Uh, otherwise, I think that'll do it. So I'm going to log out, and then we'll take a look at. Uh, We'll take a look at the login screen and then we'll go over to Fluxbox. Okay, I've logged out. This is our new login screen. We're using a new greeter on this login screen. Uh, that's a slick, it's called the slick greeter. I think uh, it works extremely well and it's good for us because it contains the session switcher right on the login box. And so when this is what this is after you've clicked that. If you click one of these circles that you'll see, that'll produce this dialog where you can choose between logging into Fluxbox or logging into Openbox. It's much easier than trying to look up at the top and I kept forgetting which one I was in. Up in the upper right hand corner, let's quickly look at these. The human figure right here is, is for um, assistance. 
And if you click that, there's a drop down menu and you can activate a virtual keyboard. We use that, of course, uh, we use that, of course, for the uh, for the official display for the touch screen. Next to that is an icon showing what the active language of the key of the keyboard is there. There isn't a possibility to switch there, but that's what it is. And then finally, in the right hand corner, this is the exit switch. This will give you a choice of restarting or shutting down. OK, we're over on the open box side and we wanted to look at some of the things here. I'm going to get rid of the help icon here again, out of sight uh, desktop icons. I want to get rid of the monitor, uh, quit that up there. Both of those can be canceled out in the uh, in the uh, settings auto start file. You would just have to put a comment in front of the line that drives them. Um, let me bring that that uh, let me bring the monitor back up for a second. There are a bunch of skins on the on the computer, and if you would go Control Function Page Up Page Down, you can change and go through page through those and see which ones you like. There are a zillion of them online as well. Uh, and now I'll go back to quitting. Okay, so um, the big change was conifers, uh, conkeys. I mean. Uh, with the Leap's video uh, commentary for a review that uh, he did of uh, the beta, there was a lot of very useful comments, and uh, some of them were around the fact that, that Conky wasn't working right over here. And so we fixed that, and to make it more visible, let's change the wallpaper. Uh, something nice and bright, this will do it. Now we're not going to miss it if there's any artifacts. So let's open up Conky Manager again, Conky, and we'll pick uh, pick a couple of these to see what happens. There's that nice patch one that's got real nice nice icons. Uh, elementary, which is which is basic but nice. Um, oops, I hit two by mistake. Huh. Went crazy. Um, and uh, Flare, which is also one that I like, they're all working just fine and they adjust and, and uh, so we took care of that. By the way, um, the, the gear icons up here, this is a the dark theme so it doesn't show as well, but the transparency is governed on a tab there and you can change, it had to be pseudo transparent, but you could, it was on transparent. So you can change it here. You can obviously also change where it is on the screen. All right, it's enough of that. I don't think I want to see that anymore. Uh, that's, that's really about all I wanted to say. Uh, there is one more thing to show you, I think, and then I'll get out of here, is that there is a, a GUI available, which is really nice. And these are all the keys, the shortcuts. And you can actually change them here. Um, you can, you know, double click it, and then you can be, you can replace that for, a, put a new accelerator. You could put, I don't know, you could put uh, Shift W for all I care. I'm not going to do it but anyway. This is a lot easier than diving down into a very long and very unreadable uh, document. Okay, we're going to go over now to the um, over to the official display, the touch screen, and see what's going on there. Um, let's go away quickly, and I'll show that in a later detailed video. But what you have now is is a clean screen. You'll see at the top a bar, and sort of see at the bottom another bar. That top is a dock. I'm going to use the edges to pull it down because those are dead keys. Otherwise, you launch stuff that's in there. And you can adjust how long it stays down. All those things are adjustable. There is a virtual keyboard um, that you can call, which works well. So that's the dock at the top. And the bottom, we have the, the uh, panel. You can see I'm recording with Simple Screen Recorder. This is the standard panel. Uh, the, the, uh, on the left, that gives us the full FXCE menu. Uh, and then we have, finally, 
the long press will give us our standard standard uh, root menu here and uh, then this is I'll just show you this quickly and then we're done this is where on the right that's where I hid the items I didn't want to see and uh, now that's going to do so I'm going to leave goodbye thanks